It feels like what white people say. Hey, what's up? It's Andy. It's the weekend today, so I thought it'd be a really fitting time to talk about extracurriculars or ECs. Duke breaks its extracurriculars down into two main categories, the ones that you live with and then the ones that you don't. Let's first talk about organizations that live together. Now, organizations that live together tend to be broken into three main categories. You have your Greek life, your selective living groups or SLGs, and then your living learning communities or your LLCs. Now, besides living learning communities, all these organizations rush in the spring, so you have plenty of time to figure out whether an organization is something that you actually want to rush before you have to commit to it full time. But let's just quickly cover Greek life. Greek life is like any other school. You have uh, Greek life on campus that covers a multitude of different groups. You have your standard white bread Greek life as well as um, uh, ethnic Greek life. That's something to definitely look into if you're interested. Uh, no pressure if you don't want to do that. Plenty of people don't do that which is actually a great segue into the next group, which are your selective living groups. It's a great community of people, and I personally am part of this uh, group, and, and it has a lot of features that make it almost like Greek life light. The rush process is definitely less harrowing, it's uh, less intensive, but you still get to meet the members. They tend to be centered around an interest. So if you're interested in entrepreneurship, as I was when I was a freshman, you can join the Cube, which is the entrepreneurship SLG. If you're also interested in languages, there's Langdorm. So if you're interested in the uh, ephemeral but undeniable rush of endorphins in your body from being accepted by an arbitrary process, there are a plenty of SLGs that are uh, basically just selective friend groups. Even if you rush an SLG, you can choose to be a friend of house, which is someone who lives with the organization but isn't actually part of the group. And on the flip side, you can also be part of an SLG and not live with them. That's something that's actually kind of cool. SLGs can double up as an organization that you care a lot about while also giving you the flexibility to uh, not have to live with them. One thing to emphasize with SLGs is that even though they are interest-based, they are still very heavily socially dictated, which means that like if you if they like you, you might not even be that good at the interest and they'll still take you. Um, I know a lot of kids feel the pressure to be part of these groups, but really any club organization, you don't have to live with them to have friends. And your worth is not attributed to what SLGs you're part of. So the last group is living and learning communities. These organizations are a little bit uh, more formal. They're actually managed by Duke University as an institution. The pros is that it's a lot more objective process that isn't evaluated on how you interact with the members. The con is that because it has to be objective, there is actually an application that you have to go through. Yes, those are the three main groups. You can find more information about SLGs by just doing a quick Google of like SLGs at Duke or Duke SLGs. I believe like one of the top searches is a list of the selective living groups. So now that we've gone over your basic living organizations at Duke, let's talk about your clubs. You have your pre-professional organizations. These are the ones that help you build your network in the field of your choice. So there's are like Catalyst, which is the tech pre-professional organization. There's DSP and Scale and Coin, which I believe are like finance and business, like business oriented women, and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's your interest groups. So there's acapella, there's dance. I don't know, there's a lot. There's your ethnicity groups. There's ASA, Asian Student Association, BSU, Black Student Union, um, and et cetera. Uh, of course, there's also publications. So there's your Chronicle, which is like Duke's like main newspaper you have pitch which is where i work well it's like the ads department you got form which is i believe the fashion magazine on campus and then spoon which is like the food related one and lastly of course you have your religious organizations now of course i've just given you some categorizations and i'm sure you're thinking well andy you didn't really give me actual club names so why why like, what am i supposed to do right and which to my answer is go find them yourself just search up duke groups um, and you'll find this website called Duke Groups. It compiles all of the clubs on campus. If you are a club, you have to register through Duke Groups, so you will find all the active clubs on that website. You know, at the end of the day, my biggest advice for any freshman is to really just find one or two clubs that you love and just commit to it uh, long term. Your first year, you can spend like kind of looking around, but once you have found the ones that you really resonate with, spend the time to just zone in. Having a large number of organizations just ends up spreading you too thin. What's gonna really help you rise within an organization or succeed in an organization is your willingness to commit more time than the average member. When you stick with the club and get to know the people within the organization, you actually form long lasting relationships, which are kind of the whole point of clubs as a whole. Duke's a great workplace. There's uh, over like 700 clubs on campus. And so go out there and, um, and find the groups that work for you and, and let me know, drop them in the comments or something, I don't know.